offer up a chance to look at the 12-0 Matt Remillard. He takes on the veteran who we've seen time and time again, Jesus Perez, scheduled for four. There is Jesus Perez, now 35 years old, 5'6", 131 from Columbia, 25, 18, and three. We've seen him in against many prospects. Years ago, back in 2001, he actually fought Tim Austin, was TKO'd for the IBF bantamweight belt. Matt Remillard is becoming a popular young fighter here in southern New England, 12-0. He is from Hartford, Connecticut, and he brings a crowd when he fights in the local Matt, casinos. Perez, you were given instructions earlier, obey my commands at all times, protect yourselves at all times. This is good, this is good here. Touch him up, good luck. Touch him up, good luck. Tony Chiarantano is the referee. They are scheduled for four. So Matt Remillard, just 21 years old, and looking to move up the ranks among the featherweights. Perez has only won one fight in his last 12, with a draw placed in there. He's basically here as an opponent. That's the role he's been playing in recent years. He's been in there against some uh, no-names, Teddy, like La Sierra and Jason Litzow and Johnny Nolasco, Leon Bobo. Quite honestly, when Perez fights anywhere near the B-minus level, he loses. Remillard is supposed to be at least that level. If he is, he wins. We'll find out. What's amazing about Perez is he's been amazingly active. He shows there's a market for good opponents. This is his third bout in one and a half months, Joe. Before Remillard's last fight, he was off one year and two months. And as we said, be back in the groove of being active again. And Remillard, 14 years younger, all of Remillard's fights have been in the New England area. Remillard in with the experienced Perez, Perez, but a fighter in Perez who knows how to lose at a certain level of competition. You make a great living with that as one of your traits and characteristics. There's always a payday for somebody who knows how to lose well in this business. No doubt about it. And this is a veteran in Jesus Perez. He does just that. Matt Remillard comes lunging in with that left hand. Perez Flores. Only seven connects in the first two minutes of this fight for the unbeaten prospect. Perez has fought for a world title back in 2001, and he was knocked out in that fight. So as we said, the experience is with Perez. Oh, there's a left hook that scores a knockdown. Four, Big shot by Remolo. Five, six, seven, eight. Not a new experience for Perez. Perez has been knocked out eight times. And if you keep your right hand down and you hook with somebody, good chance you're going to get dropped with a left hook. And that's what happened to Perez. So all of a sudden, the unbeaten prospect floating along in that first round woke up pretty quick. Good opening round for Matt Remillard here. At Mohegan Sun, so glad to be joined with our ringside guest, Mike Tannenbaum, general manager of the New York Jets. Good to be with you, Mike. Thanks for having me. Good this is a uh, very busy time of the year for you, obviously preparing for the NFL draft, and you guys have been just killing it on the free agent wire. Yeah, you know, we've been fortunate with uh, Woody Johnson and, and his support. He uh, gave Eric and I the resources and uh, organization. We went out and tried to accomplish a few things before the draft. We're going to apologize for the technical difficulties with Mike's microphone, so we will... Reflect back at the knockdown in the first round. Fix the audio issue here. But Teddy, in that first round, Matt Remillard landed that left hook that just changed the complexion of this fight pretty quickly. You're going to take a look here. You could see Perez's 
right hand is down and the left hook finds the target take another look right here you see Perez throws his left hook but forgets to pick up the right hand bad habit round number two Joe and Teddy ringside here with Mike Tannenbaum general manager of the New York Jets Mike big boxing fan a uh, big fan and uh, we're real lucky to have Teddy uh, part of our program he's been great our guys look forward to working with him and, and he's really uh, worked with uh, coach Mangini you know we've documented that well people don't know that Teddy helps train the fighters in the offseason and then comes over and visits with the New York Jets during the NFL season but when you when you first when that first came to the table your reaction was what that we're gonna bring in Teddy Atlas to be a part of this organization you know I heard so many great things about him from uh, coach Parcells for a number of years and uh, when Teddy uh, came in met with Eric the two of them hit it off and uh, our guys have really responded to Teddy he really uh, has been a great asset to us in the, in the offseason and helping us during the season as well. Now both men on the inside, Perez and Remillard. In that first round, Remillard landed 14 headshots, the left hook being the signature punch there. You know, there's different ways to hide defensively if you're 35 years old, giving up 14 years like Perez is to Remillard. You can run around the ring and hide defensively, but if you're 35, you don't have the legs to do that. So Perez is trying to do it by smothering Remillard, by staying in close and taking the offensive play away. I like that. We're mixing in our football and boxing analogies at the same time, fittingly with Jets general manager Mike Tannenbaum here at Friday Night Fights at Mohegan Sun. Very entertaining opening bout you saw, Mike, between Aaron Pryor Jr. and Alfonso Williams that went Pryor Jr.'s way, but... He had a little bit of a struggle in accomplishing that. Yeah, and Aaron Pryor Sr. has been a great to our organization as well. He's uh, addressed the team in the past, and he's been an inspiration to our defense as well. Yeah, pop a couple of his old fights in there, and that'll get that defense motivated, yeah. won't it? Uh, Hawk time's been a bit, big calling around our building. There's a cut over the left eye of Perez. Break. Ties up on the inside does Perez. He was floored in that first round against the unbeaten Remillard. Just missed with that right uppercut. And again, as I said earlier, Joe and Mike, you know, Perez, he doesn't have the legs to stay away from Remillard, who's only 21 years old. He'd love to stay away from him. You can see he's just too old to be in there with a young fighter. But he's trying to smother him and stay in close. And it's up to Remillard now to think a little bit on his feet and take a little step back and give himself room to take advantage. 14-year age difference between these two. Remillard, 21 years old. Perez, 35 years old. Seven years removed from his title shot way back when. Now in the very late stages of his career as a traveling opponent. Speaking of traveling, boy, the New York Jets have been traveling around the country just signing up everybody on the NFL free agent wire if you haven't seen what the Jets have been doing well you guys change an entire complexion of the team here what's run, run us through some of these transactions you could just a jump start to the entire team for next year well we feel fortunate to try to accomplish some of these things before the draft because we felt like uh, the offensive line was an area we wanted to shore up and with Alan Fanica and, and uh, Damian Woody we felt like we we're getting versatility experience and production uh, on the defensive side of the ball with uh, Chris Jenkins in the middle and Calvin Pace outside. We felt like, felt like those were two pieces to the puzzle in Coach Mangini's defense that will really help us going forward. We're going to find out how much you love me. Who's the number six draft pick for the <laughs> <laughs> Who do you want it to be? <laughs> oh, we need an explosive guy in there, I think. Uh, offensive talent, I don't know. McFadden, I, I don't know. But, of course, we got Thomas Jones, too, so I yeah. don't know. I really like our process. It's thorough. It's meticulous. And, and we'll be ready by the end of April and take the best player for our organization. I know you guys, you're not just going to look and all kidding aside, you're not just going to look at athletic talent. I've learned that about you. You're going to get a peek at the people's character. You're going to find out something about how they have dealt with discipline in their lives. Yeah, and Teddy, uh, as you mentioned, and, and you talk about all the time, boxing and pro football are very similar. It's dealing with adversity, it's competitiveness, and those are the attributes that Eric and I value so much. And we want to know about the person as well as the player and how they're going to function in pro football and are, how they're going to be in the off-season program. That, that's really important to us. Of course, the NFL draft right here at ESPN at the end of April. We're with Mike Tannenbaum, the general manager of the New York Jets. You know, Mike, I think that a, a potential number one draft pick, his career 
career turned around when he showed up on the contender and did the fight plan with Teddy Aslis. And that's Boston <laughs> College quarterback Matt Ryan. Teddy gave him those tips on how to box, and look at what he's done for his career. Yeah, no, no question. We've heard about that workout, and we're looking for the tape. <laughs> we'll get that tape for you. It may have been destroyed. I'm not sure. <laughs> Mike, thanks for visiting with us. Thanks Best so much for having me. With your upcoming draft. Thank you, Mike. Thanks a lot, guys. Round three here. Speaking of good young athletic talent that's on the rise. Matt Remillar, the 21 year old from Hartford, Connecticut, showing his stuff here. Scheduled four rounder against Jesus Perez, scored a knockdown in round one. Perez dealing with that cut around the eye. Gets away from that driving right hand from Remillard. Punch track numbers starting to accumulate now for Remillard as he has a 51 to 32 advantage on total punches connected, landing 38%. Remillard came into this fight, Joe, the second heaviest weight of his young career, seven pounds heavier than his last fight two months ago. Maybe that's one of the reasons why he's not separating himself right now on the inside and making sure that he works with the 35-year-old Perez. He debuted at 124 when he turned pro back in April of 2005. Tonight, 131. Perez in the prime of his career was a bantamweight, 118 pounds. Remillard's allowing Perez to have good spots in this round. Allowing Perez to keep it at a slow pace, where you would expect him to at 14 years older. He wanted at a slow pace, and to pick spots and use his experience pretty good. See if things can change for Remillard. You know, it may seem like a harmless little four-rounder that Matt Remillard is a complete control of this, but this may be a defining moment of the early part of his career because his trainers, Paul Seashon and John Scully, really just challenged him. They said, you're respecting this opponent too much and he doesn't deserve it. You're fighting like an amateur. Fight like a hardened pro out there. Let's see how he responds to that. Well, he hasn't kept it at a fast pace, and he being Remillard, the 21-year-old, and because of that, He's allowed the older fighter, Perez, knowing that he's in the last round, to have a little confidence now. He knows he's down the stretch. He has so much experience. He knows he can handle whatever's in front of him for one round. Scully's yelling from the corner, push him back, push him back. Perez has not been forced to work at a pace or at a rate that would have warmed down. He's been able to get inside and smother Remillard, keep control of the action a little bit. Keep it slow enough where he's fresh now in the last round. Uppercut on the inside from Remillard. Now he comes behind the jab. Missed with the right hand. Came underneath with a left to the body. <laughs> Referee Tony Carolantano does a good job in there, allows the action to go, only gets involved when absolutely necessary. Between Tony and Dick Flaherty, we have two good refs working these TV bouts tonight. Of course, a strong commission here at Mohegan Sun with Mike Murtha and Mike Mazzulli and chairman of the tribe, Bruce Bosom. Remillard has shown a lot of warts tonight. He yes. really has, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. He's 12 and 0. He's undefeated. He's going to probably be 13 and 0 in another 35 no seconds, him. but hey. needs to develop hey. if he's going to hey. move up that no boxing ladder. Nice. As he fights nice. better fighters and Don't younger fighters. Don't do that again. 
he, he likely has more upside and the chance to do something a little more than the other unbeaten we saw earlier, Aaron Pryor Jr., but similar results to their evenings between both of them. Yeah, I would agree with you, Joe. Revelon has not really made adjustments with the experienced Perez. Even he is a good example at the end. He's allowed himself to be smothered instead of taking a step back, as he does there at the end, but too late to get the results he wanted. That was the right thing to do. Take a little step back and let Perez fall forward into a punch. We will hear from the judges when we come back to Friday Night Fights. Welcome back to Mohegan Sun, wrapping up our four-round featherweight action between Perez and Remillard. Let's look at Teddy's scorecard. Even third round, 10-8 first round with the left hook that scored the knockdown, so Remillard goes 40-36, according to Teddy. Let's send it up to the ring to generous Joe Antonacci. Boxing fans, after four rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Clark Sammartino scores the bout 40 to 35. Judge Glenn Feldman sees the bout 39 36. While Judge Frank Lombardi scores it 40 to 35. All for your winner by unanimous decision from Manchester, Connecticut, Matt the Sharpshooter. Not as sharp as could be. Still some room for improvement, but Matt Remillard now 13 and 0.